you got, you know, three, four or five buyers, I usually I text them all ahead of time anyway and say, hey, this is getting blasted out and, you know, next morning or whatever. And, you know, I think, Carson, to answer your question is, is it's got to be in your in your gut and how you feel about that. And you'll get better at that, I think. And kind of like you attested to before, is that your word is the, is the Bible in a sense in regards to you've got to stand behind it. So as you learn maybe what your buyer does, because usually if, that, if you get one of those buyers that does that to you every time and then negotiates with you every time, obviously you learn that that's what he's doing. And then you just don't take his deal, right? Um, mm -hmm. Generally, if I bring the guy with me and he gives me a number that I can then negotiate with the seller, I don't go to anybody else with that. I always take, right. I always take their deal. You know, I had, I got this one guy that I took to a house in Pontiac that I had been to twice already. He walked all the way through, walks out the back door, tells me his number. I said, done. My, you know, Jessica, my assistant will send you the assignment doc in a couple hours. And, it, and it's, it wasn't me shading with him either. So I think you just have to kind of learn that at first. Um, I think if you're brand spanking new, you've never done a deal, is I think you just get your feet wet and get that get, get that first one done. Yeah. Because you'll learn so much in your head. Your head will stretch after that first deal's under your belt uh, to, to then be able to, well, remember back what you did, right? What, did, what were you thinking? What were you feeling? How did that buyer react to you with yours, with, to you? Because there's there's only I guess there's only four or five that I don't negotiate with. Otherwise, I'll negotiate with everybody to right. stretch it, stretch it out a little bit. I know that guy, Ron. I think yeah. that's the guy you're talking. <laughs> you know, yeah, he's a good guy. But I was just with, I was just with him today in uh, Mount Clemens or uh, right. Clinton Township. Yep. And you know, and he's quiet with the sellers, which is always good, right? He's not trying to. He's not trying to. He doesn't ask questions to the sellers. I do that. But I also know what to ask so he can hear. Right. Like, why is that sewer cap loose? Or, yeah. you know, that roof looks pretty rough. How old is that? Oh, I just put it on last year. Right. You know, that kind of stuff, right? You just kind of ask questions that you might know the answer to already. You just want the seller to say it so that the, so that, that guy can hear it, so he can hear right. it for himself. Yeah, if I go to a house and I have three or four people with me and I tell the sellers, um, you know, I'm going to have a couple contractors with me. I might have a couple of my investor partners or a property manager and they're all good with it. So there's, it's going to be fine. I make sure before I go into that house, I have a, a, I talk to everyone. I'll either text them prior or call them or meet up. We'll have a little huddle before we go inside the house. And I have rules of this showing and I let them know, look, there's no talking to the seller. You could say hi and you know, I might introduce you and things like that, but you don't ask them any questions. Any questions are gonna be directed to me after the showing. And I learned this um, the hard way. I don't even wanna say it the hard way. I learned this just by not, if you don't say anything, someone's going to say something to the seller. They're going to ask them about the tenant. They're going to ask them about how long did you own the house? Just questions that are going to confuse the seller why the why why they are there. So right. you yeah. got to really make sure they understand that. You could do it nicely. If you text them and say, look it, I tell everyone this. These are the, my rules and this is what you got. I was like, you're not going to come to any of my houses. And... Um, and you'll get people you don't know that you might throw on Facebook that want to see your house and they will try to get there early. You got to let them know that too. If you're there early, you wait for me. I'm driving a great pickup truck. You do not go. One time I went to a house recently and someone already walked through the house because the seller was there. So you got to make sure they understand. And what, what did that teach me? I got to let these people know. You do not get out of your car until you see my truck, until you see me there. And I'm running the show. You're looking at the house. You're keeping your mouth shut. Else you're never going to see one of my deals again. And I'm not trying to be a jerk. And I'm just trying to give them the, I guess, my rules of doing it. 
so I could get more deals. I could sell more deals and I can sell them more deals, you know? So. Yeah, you know, for sure. Because if they talk to the seller, they might even blow back in their face, even if they did want it. So right. you're doing them as well. That's huge. That's a great point. Thanks for bringing all that up. Definitely remember that when you're dealing, especially new buyers, ask them those questions, let them, you know, tell them ahead of time. It's worth, it's worth the conversation to just pre pre preface how you want that to go when they go look at the house. Yeah. Well, there's certainly some etiquette to anything, right? And yeah. The etiquette is just be quiet. And right? a, lot because, of as, know, a lot of buyers know this, but right. some don't. And, you know, but you know, the experienced ones do know. Yeah. They say, yeah, I know. I'm not going to say anything. I said, you're in and out. We're in and out of this house. You can see everything and, you know, it's, it's that simple, but yeah, now that I've been doing that recently in the last 30 days, it has gone really, really well, you know. Awesome. We, we should take some questions. We have about 20 minutes left. Um, let's see what we got. Uh, someone said, do you guys offer mentoring for newbies? That's, I mean, you know, that's why we're here right now. You know, we definitely don't get paid to do this. Um, we, you can join our, our Facebook group, Wholesale MI Michigan ha After Hours, and we'll answer questions on there when you post them. Um, I put my cell phone number out here. Definitely reach out to me if you have any questions. We don't do any paid marketing um, or, or mentoring. I'm sorry. We do paid marketing. Don't do any paid mentoring. Uh, what we kind of offer as mentoring is bring us a deal and we'll help you close it. And we'll split it or something like that because there's so many people who get into mentorships and never and just aren't successful but if you're bringing us deals you're going to be successful um or if you're out there asking questions about deals you already are working that's that's going to be the quickest way to the top so that's kind of you know we don't have any formal mentorship program if that's what you're asking but we and, do this every single Thursday night and if you're brand new or you're good at making leads you know there's another <laughs> level of selling the deals in my opinion so you know first become a master of getting the deals and then you could figure out mastering how to sell the deals it's not you know if you want to go slow and you're a master of getting the deals it's going to slow you up and getting deals by then trying to sell the deal so we'll teach you everything we know we'll teach you how we you know if you just get a lead you could call me I'll do a three-way conversation. I'll, I'll make the appointment. I'll teach you that. You can go on the appointment with me. I'll get it under contract and I'll sell it. And you can watch me every step of the way, you know? So, and you'll, I'm, I promise you, you'll learn something. And, and, you know, selfishly, I hope you just send me deals and we do them together. You go on the appointments with me and I sell them all. And we do, we make, and I make 50% of it. But eventually you're gonna you're gonna fly, you're gonna be by yourself. And I hope you mentor someone else just like we're doing. And we'll always be friends and and you know, investor buddies and everything else. So I mean, that's the goal. You know, there's enough houses out here. There's a I would say um, out of 20 new wholesalers that contacts me, only one out of the 20 is gonna do it, you know. Cause it's not as it's easy in my opinion, but it might not be easy for them. You know, I don't know if that made sense, but it, you know, there's a lot of commitment. There's a lot of work. You got to be doing this every day. You got to be networking and it's got to be fun for you. It, this is fun for me. I wake up in the morning. I cannot wait to go to work. I can't wait to talk to investors and sellers and I'll stay here to freaking two o'clock in the morning and wake up at four. I don't care, you know, so, you know, you got to kind of have that, but there's a balance. Don't do what I do. Trust me, you know, try to, <laughs> sorry, Mike, I, I see heater there. All right, carry on. Uh, to me, yeah. the one, the best, the best simple quality you can have is being humble and taking the advice that people give you. Um, and if you're going to pester somebody about your deal, give up half of it. You give up half for the first couple because you're going to just like Todd indicated, 
is you're going to figure it out and you're not going to need that experience anymore because you're going to do your first deal or two deals. And then I just like, Hey, this isn't brain surgery. Most deals are exactly the same. You talk to the seller, you get a deal, you sell it to a buyer, you go to title, you get paid. You know, it's, it's, it's really not that there's not, a, you don't have to go to college to flip houses. Believe me. Now, will you join groups and pay money to people to do that? You know, the question, the answer to that question about mentoring, I would prefer not to talk to you once a week for 30 minutes. That's not what I want to do. I want you to text me with your deal. I'll help you with the deal. And then you give me some, you give me some money for my time. You would have went to, you would have spent, you know, a thousand bucks on a, on a three credit class at Oakland university, wouldn't you? So why would you bother the guy that's been doing business for 20 years and not pay him? You need to pay him. And, uh, and it doesn't even have to be much. Usually I'll just let you tell me what you want to pay me. Generally my rule or my boundary is half. If I walk in the house with you, it's going to cost you half your deal. This is that simple. If you call me and text me, I usually do it for nothing. And if you throw me 500 bucks, I'll be happy and say, thank you. Um, if I had to physically do something, you're going to cut me in for half. So that's my mentoring program in a, in a, in a nutshell. I have 32 agents underneath me that have licenses that pay me nothing a year to have access to me. And we do deals all the time. And that's what I'm, you know, my pitch is somewhat as a broker, I like to hold investor licenses. If you want to do listings and things like that, you go talk to Maureen and Todd's group. Those guys will let you kind of do some retail business. Um, you what want to be with, that? go ahead. Yeah. I'll, what I'll do you do that. if you come across a deal that's a listing? Do you, um, do you list it? Do you have yes. a team that lists it? Yeah, I have a, I have a full-time listing agent on my team. Her name's Tara, Tara Roberts. Some of you might know Dave Roberts, her husband. Yeah. Yep. But she's my she's my listing person. So my acquis my intake guy always goes for the cash buy first. If we can't get the cash buy because they, they want too much, then he'll go down the road with the listing. Right. Um, recently in the last month, we've actually gotten got the buy or got the sell on the listing side and found that seller a house to purchase on the other end. So we've you know, so we doubled up in a sense on commissions. Right. Um, and it's worked out really well I'm to gonna, get both that service. I'm going to hit this next question real quick, Todd. We got like a bunch of questions. Only like 15 right, minutes, so I want to uh, just start banging these out. Eric Friday asks, what's your opinion? Uh, you, uh, you touched on this a bit, but on providing extensive analysis, like some wholesalers do, like to your buyers, do you think this hurts or helps the deal? Um. On the blast out, yes, meaning don't, if you're talking about at the acquisition appointment, I say you need to give them as much information as they're asking for. It's kind of like when your kids come to you, if you got kids come to you and ask you about the birds and the bees. If they're five years old, you don't give them all the information, right? You tell them what they can understand. So you're gonna ascertain ahead of time what that level of competence they have. Now on the disposition side for the buyers, you give as much of factual information, kind of like a reporter, where you just give them the facts, the price, the address, the bedrooms, the bath, the basement, the condition, the age of things, if you know it, or it can be confident about those and just be truthful about that. So yeah, I'm not sure I like that no, I, I think that does. I think he was talking about the, the selling side, so keep it simple on the selling side. If you want, if you want to reach out to me or Ron or whoever, get on other wholesalers, buyers list, and see how they sell their deals. If you're not sure how to format that, that's a great way to as well. Um, another question, just just tying into this, instead of taking photos of the house, why not record it instead? I so when people send me deals, I am too impatient to watch a video on the house, and it does not click in my head so i don't the only time i'll ever record is if i'm selling to an out-of-state buyer or if i know i'm never getting in the house again and somebody's gonna have to buy it sight unseen other than that i take as great of pictures as i can um you know i don't see, i i just do not i just don't like recording it ron do you ever record uh photo, like videos of it or no 
the only time I record is if I'm trying to, uh, if I'm maybe I'm just, if it's a better house, you know, generally I'm like you, especially as a, when I look at houses that I might may want to purchase, the arrow right button works real fast, right? So I do have a plug-in on my YouTube account that I can speed it up to like three times, but then you're not seeing what you should, but because I, I mean, just because the experience of looking at so many photos, just hitting that right button, just, you know, you can kind of, you can kind of glance at, oh, and then you stop, right? Sometimes I get frustrated at my computer because I won't load the silly photo quick enough. But uh, I, the answer to your question, I was rather, photos are better than, are, are a quicker view than the watching a video. And as the wholesaler, it takes you less time to take 150 photos than it does to walk around with your phone taking the video, right? Yeah. Well, a little bit of a little bit of advice I would say too is that if you do a video, don't say the address on the video, and don't put it in YouTube, because I I got I got in trouble once on a back end lo a lawyer suing me because he searched YouTube and found a video <clears throat> of a house I did because he was because he was saying that I didn't tell him about the leaky basement. Well, in the video, I made comments about the leaky basement. He found it online, the guy's lawyer. And it was, it was so I, I, what I suggest to do is if you do that with the address, is make it private when it's over or delete it, get rid of it. Like you don't need it again anyway. You know? So and, that, that's just a, a little little uh, friendly advice that cost me about 25 grand. Right. Wow. If you want to brand yourself um, and if you get the opportunity, to do a video, I suggest you do like a Facebook Live or something like that. But definitely do the pictures. Do, yes, absolutely. Do a hundred pictures, and it just gets it gets the property out there. It gets people knowing knowing who you are and what you're doing and things like that. Yeah, I can appreciate when someone sends me a deal and it has both. Usually the video at the end, but I I never watch. I can't sit there and watch a video of a house. I just can't. Uh, I agreed. So, but that's an interesting story, Ron. That's 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 really cool to just kind of be able to just take that and possibly save some of twenty five grand from hearing that. So, uh, Matt, what's up, man? Um, Matt and I actually did a deal last year together, working on some. Now he said, Todd or Ron, one of you two. What are your thoughts on the Down River area? I'm kind of a new wholesaler. He lives in Trenton. Um, He's trying to work some deals around around the area. He said it seems rare to find real motivation around here talking about the Down River area. What are your guys' thoughts on that area real quick? I love it. Yeah. And I've got a solid buyer that will buy everything in Trenton, Southgate, Wyandotte. Uh, personally, I would stay away from e-course. I think e-course e is... Yeah. yeah. You can buy them all, but have them all. Thank I've... You. E-courses, in my opinion, is like Detroit. It's like, it's like a if you if you if you understand Hamtramck in Detroit, it's like buying like buying a house with a four eight two one two zip code that's actually Detroit. Like, stop it, just like ugh. So now Wyandotte, uh, uh, what's the other little city? What uh, Trenton and Southgate are really kind of like the the Troy and Sterling Heights of, of my neighborhood, where they're just a little more affluent, bigger brick houses, nice solid brick houses. Yeah. Uh, Trenton's building department's a little tough. Um, Wyandotte's even tougher. Uh, although Wyandotte has a lot of good rental pricing. Um, uh, let me think about another city that's down there. Like South yeah. Lincoln, Lincoln Park. Park. Lincoln, yeah. 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 yeah, Lincoln Park is a good place to I think is a good place to buy because there's a lot of variance between two hundred thousand dollar houses and junk in Lincoln right. Park, and there's certainly a line in Lincoln Park. Yeah. In regards to where it's good and where it's bad and those values. Yeah. Um, and anything along Jefferson, you can because Jefferson is not is not the same as like if you go up into Macomb County or or uh, St. Clair County where Jefferson is, it's very industrial. You can sit there and watch the tankers go by, right? I'm not sure how fun that is if you're living in a house on the water, but my point being, it's a very industrial down there. Yeah. Um, 
I've never been able to pull a deal off of Parsons. Is Parsons Island down river? Oh, I got I one. Getting. Actually, I got one in Algonac right across Did you? from Parsons. Right now, I got one. Yeah, there's what's the Grosseal? That's what it is. Grosseal yeah. is down river. Yeah, um, Grosseal is down river, but Parsons Island is by St. Clair. You know, yeah, it's, it's up, yeah, it's up the river yeah. instead of down river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, oh, feels nice, yeah. And the so southwest, de southwest Detroit's not too bad as long as you know what you're doing. It's really hot because there's a lot of, yeah, because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot because it kind of spilt Mexican town kind of spills over into southwest Detroit as it goes up even up by the refineries. Yeah. Um, the coolest place you can ever go is underneath the I-75 bridge, just to look up at the highway. That's one of the coolest things I've ever done. Right. I haven't been down there in years just because it's not where we buy. But when in my REO days, we used to go down in there all the time. What they're, what they're doing now, Ron, is a lot of people from um, Southwest Detroit are actually moving to E-Course and River Rouge. So it's a lot better than it was a year ago. I mean, I just had a, uh, well, anyway, it's, it's, a good, it's a good market now a good rental market and they're selling for good money right so now. overall down river you're you, you guys are talking motivated sellers that's not an issue for you yeah yeah we have a ton of buyers ron has the buyers and we both do so you get a deal call ron call me we'll help you yeah, for sure i'll help you yeah with you if you need help with that too serious investors out here you know in the in that area i'm sure you can go on zillow and see a bunch of houses that have been flipped those people got that from some sort of motivated seller uh in order to make that kind of profit and as long as there's investment activity going on there's room for you to be a wholesaler you just have to find it before they do pretty much and you have two great connections right here that can that can sell it once you do find it um so another question elijah blunt what is a consistent practice that you do recommend for someone starting out? I, I think his question is just regarding just wholesaling in general. Uh, what's a consistent practice? Come to uh, me, Mike. Oh, I'm sorry, Ryan. Go ahead. Well, I just said networking, which is kind of tough to do these days, but networking is how you get yourself into the game and kind of known. Um, obviously, that's how I met Carson. Um, and uh, I used to be a part of the open Rhea group and always, you know, it was, it was always in front of the room. So, I mean, when you're first starting out, you just got to get your name out there that that's what you do and, mm -hmm. and get on the Facebook pages. I know we all, you know, if you get onto the Metro face, the Metro group page, not the network page, you go on there, you're going to, you're going to get your behind handed to you. If you look like you're, you're silly, believe me. So, learn how not to do that i guess would be a good thing to do and but they're just as forgiving as they are harsh yeah. in my opinion you know because once you show your colors in regards to how you do things you're going to win you're going to win or lose there's no in between um, the network page tends to be a little more forgiving for certain things and hey you know that's okay that's that's their page and all of that but i just think you just get yourself on you know, in the, I kind of alluded to it before, just be humble. Just be humble about your responses and how you take advice. Yeah, I'm willing to learn. And and on top of the networking with within real estate, because um, I think, I mean, that's how I started. The first six months of me knowing about wholesaling, all I did was network. And I didn't make a dime because that was all I did. But it really paid back a ton down the road because of all these connections. Like here I am two years later, and I met Todd through a meetup. I'm with Ron. I met Mike. I, I met all three of them at meetups. So networking is huge. You can do that online now, but you can't really, meetups aren't great right now. So Facebook, like you said, but also in your personal circle, I would get the word out that you're buying houses, depending on how big your circle is. Um, you know, if your circle is where you want to be buying houses in, uh, one of my buddies, I, I got him into wholesaling and I did. We did two JVs together. I sold his first two deals, walked him through the process, gave him all the paperwork. His third deal, his family found out he was buying houses and his uh, aunt, you know, I think it was in Ohio, owned a house in Michigan and they made a 27,000 or 
I think it was a twenty nine thousand dollar assignment fee off of that connection with their family because they were being loud about the fact that they're buying houses or wholesaling. Um, and so they were able to help their family out and their family was totally okay with them making money on it too. So that's great advice. That's exactly how I got started. Uh, just be consistent with networking, um, especially on the buyer side. Uh, AD asked, uh, referring to talking to buyers and saying, do not say this to the seller at the appointment. Do you give rules to the seller as far as what to and what, you know, how do you preface that with the seller? No, Ron, if you want to, go ahead. I, I don't give them any parameters to their house, but that, that's that I can control the narrative. Yeah. Well, that's a bad word in my opinion these days, but I can control the narrative inside the house with the seller as long as the buyer doesn't talk. Right. I can control yeah. it all. Yeah. Same thing. I'm talking to the seller and I'm talking about what's going on, how's the, how the day is going and things like that. And we're getting ready to get this thing closed and all that good right. stuff. So I know how to talk to them. So there's and, no and you won't you won't even have to cover a lot of that stuff as long as you tell them the truth at the beginning. Yeah. I mean, right. Now a lot of times I'll if I sugarcoat it at all, it's more at contractors or partners. In other words, and, and technically it is my partner. I'm bringing them a deal and they're bringing the cash. So because a lot because you, you, you when you first talk to them. You know, if we kind of talk the acquisition side first, when you're talking to them and you're not hiding it or hiding something and they can smell that, the disposition side becomes so much simpler. Like, well, of course, that's what you're doing. You're bringing these guys in so they can help you buy the house, right? These guys are my lenders, right. you know? Right. Yeah, it's, it's just so much simpler just to tell the truth. It's, it's just easier. And that's something that Michael Peter does really well. Um, and I, Carson. I'm sorry, I didn't even know you're talking. About yeah, I'm sorry. Um, any, any deal that I go to, if I really had to buy it, and I've done it many a times, I could go get the money and buy it, you know, or I could, you know, I'll call Carson and he'll buy it, you know, anyone, you know what I mean? So if you have that confidence and well, I don't want to say confidence. If you don't have the way to get the money and buy it, then don't, don't be like that. But there's times where I've been in some houses, I know it's that good of a deal. And if I had to buy it, I'll just figure it out and buy it. You know, it's that right. good. Of a deal. I, yeah, just be, you know, be considerate of the seller and then just be honest with them. Like Ron said, that's, that's helped me a ton of my business. I used to be scared to lock up deals because I didn't know how I was going to bring people through. I didn't want to hide stuff from the seller. I sell a lot of, you know, Mike and I do a lot of business together. And he prefaces, he tells the seller straight up, we work with money partners. We don't have the money to be buying all these deals every month. We have contract. We're going to get a small army of people through here um, and use that too. You know, if you're worried about that being, and this is kind of just thought to wrap it up, but if you're worried about that being an issue uh, with them agreeing to sell it to you, a lot of times what Mike will do is say, okay, you know, how much do you want for the house? 30,000. Okay. We can do the 30,000, but you have to be okay with, with us getting through, getting a bunch of partners through or who, you know, whatever the case may be. So he'll use that as kind of a negotiating tool. <clears throat> and for them, they have to unlock their door four times to get their asking price for the house now. And everything's up front. I mean, that's, that's awesome. And Mike's deals always go really smoothly because of that. The sellers don't have any issues with him. I never hear sellers yelling at Mike and we share an office. So I would hear that they, he always has a great relationship with the sellers and they know what he's doing. So that's a, that's a great point. There's so much to disposition. We could talk about this for another three hours easily, but I hope that this was beneficial. Um, the last question is how do I get the right contracts? Uh, Kaden, just reach out to me and I'll, I'll send you what I use. I have my phone number up in the chat. So did you have any kind of final thoughts, Ron? I really appreciate you coming on and sharing all this. Um, I think we just just be a good human. Yeah. Just be an honest human. And remember that you, when you're first starting out as a wholesaler, kind of Todd had alluded to, you are not a cash buyer. Don't make yourself out to be a cash buyer. You are a contract salesman. So you need to frame it in a different way. Meaning 
if you tell them you're selling contracts, they don't understand that. But you're saying mm-hmm. I have a bunch of I have a list of partners who buy houses. We buy houses together. It's their cash that's going to help me buy the house from you, right? And then when you get to a spot where you know that you're going to take that deal down, if if you can't close it, then you can have some more confidence in that. And I would suggest that that's the way you can kind of and, and Carson alluded to you can negotiate deals down by because the seller always wants more than you're willing to give them. That's just always the truth, right? So, well, Mr. Seller, if you want sixty, if you want sixty grand, the only way I'm getting you sixty grand is to give me some time. If you want a short time period, then we need to do forty. You want to give it some time to see if I can get you sixty. You then I can get you that, but I'm going to need some time. And oh, by the way, it's going to be an option. In other words, if I don't find a deal, find a buyer for your house, we're going to do one of two things. We're either going to negotiate the price again, and I'm going to prove to you that the best deal I got is in my hand. Right here, I got a 50000 deal. We're paying you sixty. Obviously, I can't make any money at that. So my point to that is to be totally transparent with that process to drive that price down. Because if their pain point is time, they're going to take your deal at that lower number. If, they're, if their pain point is the money, then they're going to give you some time time to figure that out um, i haven't i haven't bought a actually bought a house and taken it down since february because of covid i've done i've learned how to negotiate from that position a lot better than i used to and it's worked every time and i haven't i think out of the last 30 deals or 40 that we put under contract i might have had to back out of maybe three or four maybe just because of pricing or they just decided not to renew the contract or whatever. So, you know, again, I think it's just be humble, take advice with the spirit that it's given, and uh, you know, just be willing to willing to work hard. Yep. I wouldn't I wouldn't advise if you're married, working all night long, Todd. <laughs> I would not advise to do that. <laughs> Although, I can I can attest that my laptop fits real nice on my lap in bed. Right. And the TV's running and I'm listening to the TV on my headset because it's Bluetooth into the Apple TV and I'm on my laptop comping some house, right? right? I can attest that I do that too. Yeah, I'm working on yeah. my balance. Yeah. It's a ton of fun. Thank you guys. Thanks all for coming. You guys stayed the whole time. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys learned something. We most of us put our, our information up in the chat as well um so feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions um just you know don't don't hammer ron with a bunch of questions and expect expect him to just give and give give if you're not helping him out in some way shape or form um michael heater man say bye to everyone you didn't get to say much mike is a killer he does a lot with sellers but i just want to hear his voice before we let everyone go yeah, no, I just wanted to say real quick, Ron, I really appreciate you coming on here. Guys, like Ron's a, I mean, he's a he's a real big dog out here, you know. So for him to come on and kind of drop some absolute gems and bombs, I mean, I was tuning in hard because like Carson was saying, I mostly talk to uh to sellers all day. So I learned a lot just from being here with Ron. So um yeah, big shout out to Ron again and everyone for coming on. We had a good show out tonight and uh I'm hoping everyone learned. You guys definitely learned something tonight. That's that's a that's a given. So, um, yeah. And thanks again. I look forward to the next one. Hey, hey, Ron's son Matthew Woolraven has a podcast. I just found it. It's called Next Generation Investors, and it's next know, next level. I think. Isn't it? Next oh, level. is it next level? Yeah, next level. Uh, yeah. I need my read. No, it's Next Generation Investors. Is it? Yep. Okay. I'm looking at it. But it's a really good podcast. I just found it. Um, it they didn't even throw it out there to tell me about it. But um, and his son is young. Um, like, you know, he's in the how old is he, Ron? He's 22. 22 years old. They're partners. They're working together. I don't know if they're partners, but I know he's running the show with Ron and and um and the podcast, I mean, he's really good. You would think he's been doing this for a long, long time as a, doing the podcast. A um, lot of good information. They're talking, they're trying to help new investors, new guys like, oh, I'm 50, so not like me, like you guys, you know. So it, it's actually a really good one. You check it out. I listen to, I, I listen to, um, 
I'm I'm caught up to date now, so I'm listening to it. It's on my list. So one of the I think the latest one he did with a guy named uh, um it's not Alfonso. It's uh, Angelo. Angelo. Yeah, I listen. Who is the <laughs> who is the top? He's the. Have you ever heard of Frank Cava? Yeah. Which he's out of uh, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. Does two fifty deals a year, rehabs, and probably another hundred wholesales. Uh, Matthew interned with him two summers ago, but Angelo is his operations guy, and he's very. He's a very good go-getter. Be worth your, you know, our time that Matthew talked with him yeah. about how he does things in a in a big boy market like Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, yeah. Virginia is probably an hour away from DC. Hey, uh, Ron. All right, I appreciate everyone. Thank you again, Ron. And um, yep. you know, and I'm gonna tape this. Go to my YouTube page, Todd Vernon Chun. If you want to see some of the old ones, this is 100% the best one we ever done. And thanks again, Ron. But on, a, on another note, Ron, I have a new assignment agreement that I use. I got to share to you. The buyer will okay. not know your purchase price. Okay. When I send okay. them a purchase right. agreement, I actually cross it off and I send them my assignment and the assignment, um, will state what they're buying it for. And it will state right on there that this includes the purchase agreement and my assignment fee. And eventually they'll know at closing, but I'll share it with you and, and I'd like to get your thoughts on it. Okay. Okay. Sure. Absolutely. Awesome. Reach out to reach out to us if you need paperwork as well, you know, as far as assignment contracts and all that goes. But uh, we'll leave it at that. Thanks again, Ron. And thanks everyone yeah. for tuning in. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Right. Not everyone. Have a good night, guys. Next week. Right. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.